I'm going to talk about uh, the uses of E8 or essential 8 in vitro nectin to derive new iPS cells directly into these conditions. And these are some of the experimental conditions that we have used. The cell types that we used have been neonatal dermal fibroblasts from commercial vendors, adult dermal fibroblasts from commercial vendors, foreskin dermal fibroblasts obtained from patient biopsy, and adult dermal fibroblasts also obtained from patient biopsies. The plasmic combination, we purchased those from AdGene. Um, these were plasmids that were deposited by Thompson Lab into AdGene, and they're freely available. Um, they follow the OKSM properties and you can transform them, and you can have in enough plasmids to do transfections for several years. The reprogramming methods that we have tested are the AMAXA2 nucleofactor by Lanza. Uh, it comes preloaded with protocols. That's kind of the only negative thing about it. A BioRed gene pulsar 2 electroporator. Uh, people may have to uh, work out specific protocols because they do differ based on whether you're using neonatal or adult dermal fibroblasts. And then the neon transfection system, we're currently uh, working on optimizing the efficiency for that system. Essentially to say that you can use any system to derive your iPS cells and use E8 and vitronectin to culture them and derive your I I new iPS cell lines. This is our derivation scheme. And I know it's a busy chart, but I just wanted to point out a few things is, um, you can count the cells, we use about one million cells, um, use the DNA that I just mentioned, transfect the cells. Um, you can adjust the ratio of transfected cells depending on whether they're neonatal or adult into six well plates. Once you reach confluency, you start changing media, and then we do add sodium butyrate as a small molecule. Colonies appear between day 20 and 25. Um, you can pick the colonies, you can culture them on vitronectin or matrigel in E8, Initially, we add ROC inhibitor, and then you can continue to propagate them and expand them to derive your own new iPS cells. Why sodium butyrate? Well, sodium butyrate is one of the small molecules. You can choose any of the small molecules that have been published, and they work well. Uh, sodium butyrate, butyrate is a natural small fatty acid molecule. It is an HDAC inhibitor, as all of you know. It significantly increases reprogramming efficiency and also increases the ratio of iPS cell colonies to total colonies by reducing the frequency of partially reprogrammed colonies. This is a big concern for the scientific community that a lot of times you will have a large number of colonies. And the ones you pick may be partially reprogrammed. There's not a lot of sophisticated testing yet without spending a lot of time and money to do that. So the, tr the favorable treatments nowadays is to use a combination of small molecules or a single small molecule to make sure that the partially reprogrammed colonies do not make it until day 25. And the beauty of this system is if you actually mark the colonies and follow them every day, the partially reprogrammed colonies will disintegrate and disappear right in front of your eyes. So it saves you a lot of time and money and aggravation because you don't end up picking a partially reprogrammed or incompletely reprogrammed colonies by using small molecules. Uh, these are just some pictures. This is normal neonatal dermal fibroblasts ready for transfection. Um, these are transfected cells at about 20 to 30 confluency. These are transfected cells at day six, and you can start seeing colony morphology appearing right in these areas. The fibroblast distinct appearance of spindle-shaped cells is now changing into round-looking cells. If you look at them at 10x, you can see that indeed they are different. Um, we get about 60 to 100 colonies per 10 million transfected cells. The beauty of that is they are not partially reprogrammed, so there's a lot of colonies for you to pick from. And then the other thing which I mentioned is, if you are using a skin biopsy, you can add EGF and thrombin right from the beginning, derive your fibroblasts from the skin biopsy, and continue your transfections. These are uh, colonies that appear. This is day 15, day 20, day 17, day 17. Just to give you examples that the colonies are very distinct in morphology and appearance, and it is very easy to pick the colonies and start culturing them to derive iPS cells in very easy ways. 
these are cells that we picked and started propagating. And so at 2.5, this is how they look at day two, day three, and day four. And as you can see, this is a very familiar picture to all of us who do stem cell research. These do look like human pluripotent stem cells. And you can continue, you can characterize them, and you can bank them, and you're ready to go. Um, one thing that we do is while we are culturing them, we want to know um, whether they maintain the characteristics of pluripotency. So we actually use the Alphos live stain that Life Technology offers. It's a really quick and easy stain. You don't have to fix your cells, which is a very distinct advantage. The stain disseminates in two hours. So you can quickly check your colonies and move on. You don't have to dedicate plates that are fixed to do any kind of staining. And um, these are two colonies. They, they kind of have a funky shape, but you, know, they, you can tell that they are positive for Alphos. Um, we have characterized the newly derived iPS cells for viability, proliferation, pluripotency, differentiation potential by making EBs, as well as karyotyping.